All right, so this is 1.2. We're going to be talking mostly about circles, but also just graphing in general. So we can sketch a graph by plotting points. If we're ever given an equation like this, it may be helpful to plug it into y equals first or rearrange it to make it y equals. How can I make this equation y equals? What would I need to do first? Subtract the 2x, move that to the other side. So I have negative y is equal to negative 2x plus 3. Divide by negative 1, because we want to change the signs of everything. So y is equal to 2x minus 3. Which they already did that for us here. Do we know what type of graph we're going to have here? If we have y is equal to 2x minus 3, what shape is this graph going to have? So this equation's kind of in the form of y equals mx plus b. Something's y equals mx plus b. What shape? Linear. It is a linear graph. Our graph's going to be a straight line. So just for the sake of time, I'm only going to plug in some of these numbers. So let's plug in 0. So I'm plugging in these numbers for x, finding the y, and that's going to be my point x, y. So if I have... 2 times 0 minus 3, that would be 0 minus 3, which is negative 3. Next, 2 times 2 minus 3 would be 4 minus 3, so 1. And then 2 times 4 minus 3 would be 8 minus 3, so that gives us 5. So our coordinate points here would be 0, comma, negative 3, 2, comma, 1, and 4 comma 5. If we graphed these points, they would form a line. So even if we weren't sure what shape of our graph we would have, just plug in values for x, you'll get values for y, which will give you the points, and then just plot your points. You'll see your points will form a line. Let's look at the next one. So if we have something that is x squared, what shape will our graph have? Parabola. parabola. Awesome. Our graph is going to be in the shape of a parabola. If we didn't know that, we could still just plug in points and see where our dots lie and just connect the dots. So I'm going to plug in negative 3. So we have negative 3 squared minus 2. That would be 9 minus 2, which is 7. So our first point would be negative 3 comma 7. I'm going to plug in 0. 0 squared minus 2 would be negative 2. So our next point would be 0 comma negative 2. And then I'm also going to plug in positive 3. So that would be 3 squared minus 2, which is 7. So if we plotted these points, Again, you would want to plot more points to kind of see the exact shape, but I'm just plugging a few so you can see the general shape. We go to the right three, the left three, and up seven. So our graph would be a parabola shaped like this. And then same thing for the third one. What does an absolute value graph look like? What shape? does an absolute value graph have? Anybody remember? It's a V shape. So it's kind of like a parabola, but instead of it being a U, like a parabola, it's a V. So it has that sharp point at the end. What does an absolute value do to a number? If I had the absolute value of negative 3, what would that be? Three. Positive 3. Perfect. It turns the number positive. What's the absolute value of 0? zero and the absolute value of positive three still positive three absolute value just turns the number on the inside positive if it's already positive it stays positive so our point here would be negative three three zero zero and three three all right next we're going to talk about intercepts 
So we could have an x-intercept or y-intercept or both or neither. So an x-intercept is where the graph crosses the x-axis. To find the x-intercepts, we plug in 0 for y and solve for x. And then to find the y-intercepts, we plug in 0 for x and solve for y. And that's where our graph crosses the y-axis. So you plug in zero for the opposite letter that you're looking for. So example five, let's practice finding our x and y intercepts. So if y is equal to x squared minus two, let's find our x intercepts first. What do I do to find the x intercept? Zero. Plug in zero for y. So if zero is equal to x squared minus two. Now we want to solve for x. So I need to get x all by itself. Tab it. What should I do to get x all by itself? Um, plus two. Add 2. So 2 is equal to x squared. Tab it. What should I do next? Um, How do I get rid of that squared on the x? Square root. square root both sides. What do we always have to remember when we take the square root of both sides? Plus or minus. Um, so x is equal to plus or minus square root 2. Now for our x-intercept, it's a coordinate point. So we can't just leave it as x equals. We have to write it as a coordinate point. So since x is equal to plus or minus square root 2, I'm going to say square root 2, comma, 0. And then the other point would be negative square root 2, comma, 0. I'm OK if you left it as plus or minus square root 2, comma, 0. But on WebAssign, it's going to make you separate it. So you'll have to put both x-intercepts in. So we have two x-intercepts here. We cross the x-axis twice. Now let's find our y-intercepts. What do I need to do to find the y-intercept? Plug in 0 for x. So I have y is equal to 0 squared minus 2. Have it what's 0 squared minus 2? Negative. negative 2. So y is equal to negative 2. Samuel, how would I write my point? Uh, zero, negative two. Awesome. 0, comma, negative 2. Since y is negative 2, that's going to go in the y spot. And then we plugged in 0 for x, so 0 is going to go in the x spot. All right, let's look at 51. So let's find the x-intercept first. Talia, what do I need to do to find the x-intercept? Stephen, what do I do to find the x-intercept? Plug in 0 for y. So I have 0 minus 2x times 0 plus 2x is equal to 1. So we plug in 0 for y, and then we solve for x. So the zeros are going to go away. So I have 2x is equal to 1. And then what would I need to do next to solve for x? Divide by 2. So what is x equal? 1 half. How would I write my x-intercept? 1 half. One half comma 0. Perfect. That 1 half is going to go in the x spot since it's the x-intercept. All right, Chloe, how do I find the y-intercept? Uh, Plug in 0 for x. So I have y minus 2 times 0 times y plus 2 times 0 is equal to 1. So if we're multiplying by 0, that's just 0, so it's going to go away. So I have y is equal to 1 left over. So what's my y-intercept? Perfect. 0, comma 1. Awesome. All right, let's do 53 next. find the x-intercept first. All right, Talia, how do I find the x-intercept? What do we do first? Tab it. You said y equals 0. 
plug in 0 for y. So I have 0 is equal to the square root of x plus 1. Now we want to get x all by itself. We're solving for x. Nick Smith, what should I do first? How do I get rid of that square root? We're going to square both sides. So I square the left side and square the right side. What's 0 squared? And then on the right side, the square root and the squared cancel. So we're just left with x plus 1. What should I do next? Subtract 1. Subtract one. So negative 1 is equal to x. How do I write my x-intercept? Negative 1, comma 0. Perfect. Now let's find our y-intercept. Diego, what do I need to do to find the y-intercept? <coughs> plug in 0 for x. Perfect. So y is equal to the square root of 0 plus 1. What should we do first to solve here? Do we have to square both sides? Let's just add. What's 0 plus 1? 1. And what's the square root of 1? 1. So what would my y-intercept be? 0, 1. Perfect. Next, we're going to talk about circles. So we have the equation of a circle here. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared, where our center is h comma k. So the h and the k get plugged into our equation here, and the radius is r. Notice how in our formula, it's x minus h and y minus k. That just means that if we are plugging in our center into the formula, you flip the signs. Because it's a minus, you're going to flip the sign. So if my center was like positive 2, it would go in as minus 2. So you always flip the signs of your h and k. And then if our circle has the center at the origin... The origin 0, 0. So I wouldn't be adding anything to the x or to the y. So it's just x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So that's only when it's at the origin. When your center is 0, 0. All right, let's do some practice. So let's look at 67. We want to find the center and the radius. We don't have to graph now. But let's find the center and the radius. So for 67... What would my center be? So the center is a coordinate point. Are you adding anything to the x? No. So it'd be 0. Are you adding anything to the y? No. So my center is 0, 0. To find the radius, we take the square root of what it's equal to. So what's the square root of 9? 3. So our radius would be 3. Let's do 69. What's the center? Perfect. We change the sign. So since it's minus 3, it turns into positive 3. We're not adding anything to the y. It should be 3, 0. And then what's our radius? Awesome. We take the square root of 16. So our radius would be 4. Well, this is really easy. I was so confused. 71, Tabit. What's our center? Perfect. Negative 3, comma, positive 4. And what's our radius? Perfect. We take the square root of 25, which would give us 5. All right. Sometimes it's not going to be as easy as just looking at it and identifying the center and the radius. For 73, we have to find an equation of the circle that satisfies the given equation or the given conditions. So we have the center at negative 3, 2. So this is our h and our k, and our radius is 5. So for 73, I'm going to write the formula here for us so we can just plug in. So x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. 
Perfect. Let's plug in. Stephen, what goes first? X minus it would be x minus negative 3. So we flip the sign. So x plus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared. And that's equal to 5 squared, which is 25. So when you're plugging in, you have to flip the signs. Just like when we were identifying the center, given the equation, we had to flip the signs. All right, Tabitha, let's do 75. Whoa, one step at a time. Center's at the origin, so what does that mean our center is? Zero, zero. zero, zero. Thanks, Tabitha. And our graph passes through 4, 7 here. So if I were to draw my graph... The center is at 0, 0. It passes through 4, 7. So right 4, up 7. So my circle would look like this. Now, in order to plug it in, I need the center and I need the radius. Do I have the radius here? Did it give me the radius? No. But the radius is the distance from the center to a point on the edge of the graph. So how do you think I can find the distance between the center and that point that we were given for seven? The distance formula. So sometimes it's not just as easy as plugging in. We have to find the distance formula. So I'm gonna find the distance between zero, zero and four, seven. What's the distance formula? X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared. And the square root of all of that. Sorry. So we have x1, y1, x2, y2. It doesn't matter which one's your x1 and y1 or which one's your x2, y2, which one's your first or your second point. You're just finding the distance between the two points. So it doesn't matter. The distance from A to B is going to be the same distance as B to A. So it doesn't matter. Let's plug in. So we have 4 minus 0 squared plus 7 minus 0 squared. So 4 squared plus 7 squared. So the square root of 16 plus 49. And what's 16 plus 49? 65. So the distance is square root 65, which is the same as our radius. We found the distance of the radius. So our radius is square root 65. Now let's plug in everything that we have into our circle equation now. So our equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. What's going to go into my H and K? Zero, zero. My center is at zero, zero. So here we have X squared plus Y squared is equal to what? 65. Perfect. It would be square root 65 squared because it's R squared, which would just be 65. So for A, we want to find the equation of a circle with radius 3 and center 2, negative 5. So our centers are H and K, and our radius is R. So we just plug it in here. Tab it. What would our equation of the circle be? What would come first? So what's our H? So X minus 2 squared plus what? Y plus 5 squared. Always flip it. So this is r squared, so we take our radius and square it, which would be 9. All right, let's do b. So b says, find an equation of the circle that has the points p, 1, 8, and q, 5, negative 6, as the endpoints of the diameter. So if we had a circle, our diameter goes through the center, and these are the two endpoints. What do you think I need to do to find... The middle of the endpoint. Midpoint, yes. So as a reminder for what we did yesterday, our midpoint formula is x1 plus x2 over 2 
comma y1 plus y2 over 2. We want to find the middle of these two points to find our center. So I'm going to call p x1 y1 and q x2 y2. So 1 plus 5 over 2 and 8 plus negative 6 over 2. 1 plus 5 is what? 6 over 2 is 3. 8 plus negative 6 and 2 over 2 is 1. So our center is 3, 1. So in order to plug it into the equation, I need the center and I need the radius. Do I have the radius here? No. How do you think I find the radius? Distance. The distance between what? The One of the endpoints and? And the midpoint. So we want to find the distance between the center and one of the endpoints. It doesn't matter which endpoint you pick. I promise if you use the, this, the center and either one of the endpoints, you'll get the same answer because they're going to be the same distance. But just make sure you do it right. I'm going to pick P just because it's positive and it's the first one. So we want to find the distance between the center and P. Since P is already labeled X1 and Y1, I'm just going to call the center X2 and Y2. Again, it doesn't matter which one's your first point or which one's your second point. So the distance is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So let's plug everything in. 3 minus 1 squared plus 1 minus 8 squared. We get 2 squared plus negative 7 squared, 4 plus 49. What's 4 plus 49? 53. So our distance is square root 53, which is our radius. Now do I have my HK and R? Yeah, so now we can plug it in. All right, Tabit, in our circle equation... What would come first? X minus 3. X minus 3 squared plus y, plus, I mean y, minus, one, sorry. y minus 1 squared. And what's that equal to? 53 squared. Square root 53. What's the square root of 53 squared? 53. Just 53. So remember, it's equal to r squared. So you just get rid of the square root because Square root 53 squared would be 53. Great job. That would be the equation of the circle. So sometimes it's just going to be as easy as plugging it in. Really no work required. Sometimes we might have to only do the midpoint formula. Sometimes we might only have to do the distance formula. Sometimes we might have to do both.